Hey everyone, welcome to No DQ video here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. Thank you all for tuning in today. I have your questions from twitter.com slash Aaron Rift using the hashtag No DQ Turns 20. So let's go ahead and get started with your questions. First one today comes from a first time asker, Freddie PhD. Do you think the WWE will take stern disciplinary action against Roman Reigns for the PR damage control, or will they sweep the steroid implications under the rug? So for those of you that missed it, a man that recently was jailed and investigated by the DEA for distributing steroids recently implicated several celebrities as clients with one of them being Roman Reigns. Now the question is, will WWE take action against Reigns? Here's the situation. Right now, it's just the word of this one person who's being investigated. There's no actual proof that Roman Reigns has bought steroids from this guy. I think that if there was some sort of proof then WWE would have to take action against Roman Reigns. It certainly isn't good publicity for WWE considering that sites like Forbes have jumped on this story and it's starting to really blow up. But unless there's actual proof that Reigns bought these steroids, then I don't think WWE is going to do anything about it. I think that WWE will likely just see if the thing goes away if the story goes away and just move forward as planned. But if something else comes out about this and Roman Reigns does in fact have ties to this guy beyond what he's saying, then it, it would be a situation where WWE would have to do something and would have to change their plans for WrestleMania to avoid the negative publicity and also the whole wellness policy. WWE would have to do something. But right now, I think WWE's just uh, going to lay low and not say anything unless they have to. This one comes from B Hill. What are the chances we see Ricochet at the NXT TakeOver Philadelphia or maybe even the Royal Rumble? I think the odds are slim. I mean, we could see him potentially at the NXT show. I don't think we'll see him in the Royal Rumble. Keep in mind, I talked about this in recent videos. As far as potential surprise appearances in the Royal Rumble goes, I feel like if we see any, they'll be in the women's match. Maybe we'll get one or two in the men's match. Uh, but pretty much all the spots are going to be filled with current talent in the men's Royal Rumble match. And if anybody from NXT makes an appearance, It'll be somebody like an Eric Young or Velveteen Dream. One of those guys. I think it's unlikely we'll see Ricochet. We might see him in the crowd at NXT TakeOver, but I don't think we'll see him in the Royal Rumble match and involved with the main roster WWE stars just yet. This one comes from Chris. Hey Aaron, did WWE sign Candice Array due to the career-ending injury to Paige. No, definitely not. Candice LeRae has been on WWE's radar for a while now, and it was just a matter of time until the company signed her. It's merely a coincidence that WWE signed her right around the time that Paige got hurt. Candice LeRae was part of the Mae Young Classic, of course, and she's been a big indie star for several years now. I've talked about her for years, how WWE should sign her, and she has the potential to be a major superstar in WWE. It's just a coincidence, the timing of it. It had nothing to do with Paige getting hurt. Got this one here from James V. Do you think Sasha Banks losing to Sonya Deville on Raw is punishment for the Paige incident? And do you think she'll job more now until WWE feels she's been punished enough? It was an unfortunate accident. Well, I think people will have their conspiracy theories and think, oh, WWE's burying Sasha Banks on purpose because she hurt um, 
page. Now, I did talk about this before with D'Lo Brown and how his career was never really the same after he hurt draws. Will the same thing happen with Sasha Banks? I don't think so. I mean, it's possible that Sasha Banks' push could be derailed a bit over time. It's possible that she'll have more political enemies, people saying, hey, you know, she's reckless, she hurt Paige, and she should not be pushed. I'm sure the people that are against her will use that to try and bring her down in WWE, and unfortunately, that's the nature of wrestling. It's cutthroat, and people try to get ahead at all costs. But Sasha Banks is still a marketable WWE superstar, and I think it would be foolish from a business perspective to have her lose just because you're trying to punish her. I mean, you don't punish somebody for an accident. So I don't see WWE doing it specifically to punish her. You know, if she does lose her push over time, it could be it could be a combination of a number of things including talent trying to bring her down politics and all that stuff. But Sasha Banks, like I said, there's money to be made with her and it would just be bad business to have her lose for the sake of punishing her. This one comes from Aaron Rift. Okay, nice username there. Hey Aaron, could you see WWE turning a negative into a positive by turning Sasha heel and having her brag about ending Paige's career? That's always a possibility as well. You know, in addition to Sasha Banks possibly just being phased out because of what happened, you could also take the situation and make it into a storyline. You know, sometimes the best storylines in wrestling are based off of real life. I don't think WWE would do it unless Paige was okay with it. But if Paige was like, hey, let's make some money out of this, then... I could see WWE possibly doing it. Um, but the thing is, it was a house show and it hasn't been acknowledged on television yet. I suppose WWE could show footage from the house show and then have some sort of interview segment with Sasha Banks and Paige. And you, you could theoretically do something with that. I mean, it does remind me a lot of an Attitude Era storyline, something with Vince Russo, where they would play up on real life and turn it into a storyline. I would not rule it out. It could very well happen at some point, and it could be an effective way to get Sasha Banks over as a heel, and I think many of us would agree that she could really benefit from a heel turn. We'll see. Time will tell. This one comes from Aaron Lewis. Is it just me, or does the build-up towards the Royal Rumble, the men's match in particular, feel like it's lacking serious momentum? Are there any big angles you could think of that could be shot at Raw 25 to help get the fans more interested. I agree that the buildup has overall been lackluster. I think WWE is relying on the fact that the Royal Rumble sells itself. And that is true to a degree. People have been watching the Royal Rumble pay-per-view now for 30 plus years. About 30 years. Yeah, first one was 88. So yeah, 30 years. 30 years of the Royal Rumble. And... It has become a tradition in WWE, and it does sell itself. However, I still feel some effort should be put into the storylines. The women's match, there's not really a storyline. It's just WWE's making history, the first ever women's Royal Rumble match. The men's match, it's all right, but I feel like if you had some legends coming back, maybe do some video packages, something... To, to make this feel like it's a bigger deal. There's always more you can do, I feel. And I, I think WWE hasn't really done enough to get me personally all that excited for the pay-per-view. I think the other problem, too, was that the last several Royal Rumbles haven't exactly lit the world on fire, especially 2014 and 2015. Those Rumbles in particular left bad tastes in people's mouths. I think WWE really needs a home run Royal Rumble this year. And then you have the Universal title match, which, let's face it, isn't 
exactly the most exciting match on paper. Uh, Braun Strowman, WWE has done a tremendous job with him, but Kane in the match, Brock Lesnar, triple threat with these three big guys. It just doesn't sound like it's a great match on paper. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised and it will deliver beyond expectations, but it doesn't really sound like a, a star-studded match. Maybe five years ago it would have been, but now, not so much. I think a lot of it is just due to Kane's age at this point. You know, if it was the Kane of 1999 and these three guys were in there, maybe there would be a little bit more excitement. And then you have the WWE title match, which I think is utterly predictable. I don't see Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens winning this match. I think it's just something for AJ Styles to do to lead up to WrestleMania, give him a big win. Um, you know, one of those matches where the odds are stacked against the champion. I don't, I don't see a title change there, but I'll talk more about this when uh, we do the NoDQ.com predictions video. Maybe on the go-home show, you asked me what angles WWE could do. We'll see. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but you know, maybe have something where you have the big stars get John Cena on the show and have some real intensity, have some strong promo work back and forth between some of the top contenders maybe have a few of the underdogs get in the faces of the favorites, do something just to make this match feel like it's a big deal and really hit home that WrestleMania is coming up soon and this is a must-see show. Um, you know, just angles like that. Maybe WWE will do something hot with Lesnar, Kane, and Brock Lesnar. That remains to be seen. It's just, it's just the match itself I'm worried about. I'm not sure it's going to be a great match and I'm not sure if any kind of build can really get me hyped up for that match. This one comes from Calvin. Who is the biggest name in WWE history to never win the Royal Rumble? And he mentions a bunch of names here. An interesting one is The Rock. I mean, The Rock did win, but then I think it was reversed. I'm not even sure what the official verdict is on that match. If The Rock is recognized as the winner of the big show, um, you know, Apparently, that was the one Royal Rumble match where the finish was screwed up. The Rock was not supposed to have his feet hit the floor. The Rock was just supposed to outright win the match. But he accidentally had his feet hit the floor, so WWE had to work it into a storyline. I get that question a lot. People ask me, and, and looking back, I think that was the one time where the finish did not go exactly as planned. Um, there's also talk about 2005 and that they weren't supposed to both go out at the same time. Um, and that's why Vince came out and then had that whole incident with his quad. Um, but as far as others besides that in, a, in an official capacity, um, Chris Jericho, I think would be at the top of the list. Kane, considering Kane's track record in the Royal Rumble, destroying so many people and all the eliminations, Kane would be right up there at the top as far as big names that never won the Rumble. Randy Savage never won the Royal Rumble. He's another big name there. Um, those are the top ones that I can think of off the top of my head. And CM Punk, of course, is another one. Got this one here from Paul Jackson. I know this sounds like a long shot, but do you see any possibility of P.D. Williams one day ending up in WWE? They can reform the old Impact Wrestling Group Team Canada with Bobby Roode and Eric Young. I feel like if WWE was going to bring in P.D. Williams, they would have done so already. It would have happened years ago. I don't know his age offhand. I know with Christopher Daniels, Daniels is pushing 50 now, so it's pretty much too late for him. P.D., I would not rule out completely, but I feel like it would have happened already. They would have already signed him by now. And I know he was out of the limelight for a while, and he just recently came back to Impact Wrestling. I don't think that WWE would reunite him with Bobby Roode. You know, it is a TNA storyline. I don't think WWE would bring them together and, and recreate that, that group. Just like I don't think WWE would bring in James Storm and team him with Bobby Roode and do beer money in WWE. It's not a WWE concept, you know. They do have the Bullet Club, I should say the Balor Club, excuse me, cease and desist. Um, but that's like the one exception where WWE actually 
acknowledges something from another promotion and kind of takes that idea. Usually WWE doesn't do it, and I don't think they'll do it with TNA. Um, come to think of it, they did do the whole House of Horrors, which was like a knockoff of uh, the final deletion, and now Matt's doing the Woken gimmick. So there are exceptions. You know, I'm sure some people will watch this video and say, yeah, there, there are exceptions. Of course, there's always exceptions. I'm just saying generally um, WWE doesn't do it. This one comes from Smirtaza. If John Cena and Nakamura are not winning the Rumble this year, then who do you see winning it? Maybe Batista? And which match would you rather see? Lesnar versus Batista or AJ versus Batista? As far as Batista matches go, I'd rather see Lesnar versus Batista just because I feel like they're both similar in terms of their size and their two powerhouses. I just think it would be a more interesting match. Um, Batista and AJ would still be interesting though. As far as who's going to win the Rumble, again, I'll give my opinions when we do our predictions video. Um, the top favorites, obviously, John Cena, Roman Reigns, Nakamura is a favorite uh, because of all the AJ Styles versus Naka Nakamura speculation. Dolph Ziggler, since we haven't seen him in a while, it could be his year. Maybe he'll win it and face AJ Styles in the middle of the card for the WWE title. That could possibly happen. Finn Balor could possibly win and face AJ Styles, brand versus brand at WrestleMania. I mean, those are the top five right now. Anybody else, I would be fairly surprised if they won. But the five I just mentioned, I think, would be the most likely choices to win this year. This one comes from DJ Whitey. Yo, Aaron, if Benjamin and Gable don't win the tag titles at the Royal Rumble. Do you think Gable should go singles? I think he has a lot of personality on the mic and his match with AJ was solid. Maybe put the US strap on him. I think right now he's best off in a tag team. I think if he was on his own, he would get lost in the shuffle very quickly. Him and Shelton Benjamin are just starting to build some momentum and gain some steam in WWE. So I don't see them splitting up anytime soon. I think Benjamin is helping elevate Chad Gable and the two of them as a tag team. It works well for Gable and they're just finally starting to come into their own with this heel turn. See where it goes. Let these guys be a team for a while. They're doing well. I think Gable going off on his own, he would just end up in opening matches, kickoff matches. I would not see him in the US title picture. Way too soon for that. I think he's best off in a tag team and really getting established in WWE. Keep in mind, he hasn't really been established yet. American Alpha came in, didn't really make much noise, but now they're starting to make some noise as a tag team. So let's see how it goes. Don't, don't kill it off yet. Got this one here from Michael. Hey Aaron, will WWE be on Fox by 2019 if USA Network doesn't renew the deal? WWE could end up at a number of different stations or maybe even streaming um, on a streaming service like Netflix or Sling. I mean, 2019 is still, you know, a year from now and the landscape is continuing to change on a monthly basis. The technology is changing and anything is possible at this point. I think my gut feeling is that in all likelihood... WWE will stay on USA Network. Um, USA Network is happy with the ratings for WWE. Um, and I think part of the, the news that's out about Fox and maybe Facebook getting involved, I think a lot of that is perhaps fueled by WWE to try and negotiate a better deal with USA Network. WWE wants the idea out there that the company is such a hot commodity. All these stations, all these channels are trying to get this hot property. WWE wants that. They want a bidding war with all these different stations and networks. But in the end, my feeling is WWE will stay with USA Now. But you don't know. I mean, anything can happen in a year. Things could definitely change with the technology and some company out there, whether it's Fox or Disney, I mean, even Disney could be a possibility. Somebody out there could throw some huge money at WWE and WWE could, in fact, leave USA Network, I think. And also keep in mind WWE's popularity. 
they could maybe have a popularity boost in a year. Maybe that maybe they'll have a decline. Who knows? I mean, it's really hard to say right now. Um, WWE could be in a different place popularity wise in a year, and that could change the game as well. Got this one here from Sean T. Flick. Since Seth Rollins is allowed to do the curb stop blackout again, will we see Randy Orton using the punt? I'm not really sure why Orton has stopped using the punt. I'm not sure if he was told to stop or if he just decided not to do it as a babyface character. Um, that I'm not sure about. I think Rollins using the curb stop again is good for Rollins. Orton doesn't necessarily need to do the punt. That's more of a, a secondary move that he adopted in recent years. I mean, for, for Rollins, the curb stop is such a cool finisher and... It helps define him. You know, it's it's a very unique move. And you think of Seth Rollins in the curb stop. And I think the curb stop really helps him get over with the fans as far as being a cool finisher goes. Uh, with Orton, he already has the RKO. So it's not like he has to do the punt. The punt was designed when he was a heel to get that, that major heat. And he's a babyface character. So there really isn't a need for a punt. Unless there's a storyline that really calls for it. And let's face it, right now, there's no storyline. There's no reason for Orn to hit the punt. You know, it's a special occasion type of move. Whereas the curb stomp is Rollins' finishing move that he uses every match. That'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ Video. If you enjoyed today's video, please share this video with friends. Click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can get the latest No DQ videos as they become available. Stay tuned this week for more videos and I will see you guys next time.